it's Christmas time, so let's talk about some horror movies. Hey, I'm Amy and welcome or welcome back. The Black Christmas Remake Remake is coming out in a couple weeks, but I will not be doing it until Christmas Eve because it's going to be my Christmas Eve special. Plus, I wanted to do a review of both the original Black Christmas and the 2006 remake, so I'll be doing those this Tuesday, next Tuesday, and then it'll be Christmas Eve, and we'll be talking about the new 2019 remake. And with remakes, I usually do talk a little bit about what my predictions will be for the newest one that will be happening in the 2006 review, so just hold on to your horses for that, and let's talk about the 1974 Black Christmas. As usual, I have seen the Dead Meat Kill Count, but that was about two years ago, so I remember almost nothing. I went into this with a very fresh start. This is one of the very first slashers. Psycho is usually considered the very first slasher, but fun fact, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre came out in October of the same year, and that is a slasher as well, usually considered a slasher. Leatherface is considered a slasher, but in most horror circles, they do consider Black Christmas to be the starting point for slasher films. Because Black Christmas and Texas Chainsaw Massacre are where a lot of slasher tropes began. And if you want to see me break down some of these a little bit more, there is a video, you can find it up there, where I talk about all the reasons why I love slasher films and break down all of them. You get things like the final girl, the way the killer is hidden from view, the calls coming from inside the house. Even though that is technically not stemming from slasher movies, it is, I believe, a trope from some 50s or 60s horror films, and a bumbling cop. Some other fun little things about this film that I really love that you can only find in a film from the 1970s is things like the way they would trace a call. I've never seen how they would trace a call back then. Most of the time in cop shows or dramas, you just see them with this box connected to the phone because they're all modern ways of tracing calls, so they don't need to be running around looking for where the calls are connecting each other. Other. Some of the sorority girls throughout the film do kind of get on my nerves a little bit, so their deaths aren't that terrible to me. I wasn't super heartbroken, but they did have some great deaths. I will not get into a lot of the in-depth on that. If you want to see in-depth on those depths, check out Dead Meets Kill Count on that. But a lot of the characters are very highly unlikable, especially Barb and Mrs. Mack. They're constantly drinking and Barb is so annoying, so when she was killed, I wasn't too fussed. And one of the surprisingly few males in this is Peter, Jess's boyfriend, and he plays this very stereotypical male role that gets upset when Jess wants to be an independent woman and not get married to him and start a family. And he uses this anger and calls her selfish for destroying his dreams, even though he was the one making the choice to stop playing at the conservatory and start a family with her. And finally, like I mentioned earlier, I want to talk a little bit about the killer and the way cinematography is used for the killer. This is true of a lot of horror movies and slasher movies. They use the camera as a POV of the killer, but in this, it shows the killer getting into the house, watching the girls, and even killing them at some point, which gives the audience a vicarious sense of killing these victims, especially the ones that they aren't too fond of. The camera also hides a lot of the killer. So when you do see his or her physical body, it's usually his legs or his hands very hidden in shadows or cut off from view of the camera to make this character more mysterious. And because you eventually find out that the calls are coming from inside the sorority house through the phone in Mrs. Mack's room, which is a totally different number than what is in the main part of the house, you are constantly wondering if the killer is the same person as the caller. But in the end, I feel like we could have gotten a little bit more character building for Billy slash the killer because it just seems like it's he's just there. We don't get any backstory on him or anything like that. It's just someone who's killing all these girls for no reason and I think they do that to throw off and make you think that it is Peter at the end, just like the cops do, but we do see that there is still a killer in the house. But that is all I have for the 1974 Black Christmas. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below if you have seen it. Like I said, I will be talking about the 2006 
Black Christmas next week, so look out for that, along with some predictions for what I think the 2019 Black Christmas will be like. But thank you guys so, so much for watching. I really, truly do appreciate you. Whoever you are, let me know here in the comments down below, and let's be friends. If you enjoyed this, leave a like and subscribe if you're new, because I love talking on these movies, TV shows, filmmaking, mystery, all that fun stuff, and I'll see you next time. Bye!